Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you can all hear me okay. Um, every week we have a technical issue and there's always something. So let me just check everything is going okay on the phone side of things and then we should be able to hear that. If you can hear me okay, uh, let me know in the comment section. Uh, if you can see me okay as well, let me know in the comment section as well. And tonight's guest is an absolute um, legend within the hypnosis circuit. Um, I saw this gentleman about, I think it's about 15 years ago. Um, a brilliant stage performer. Um, and this is a guy that has done everywhere, uh, Masonic Lodges, pubs, clubs, theatres, all the way through to cruise ships where he's doing incredibly well with that uh, before COVID, obviously. So guys, if you can hear me okay, please let me know in the comment section. Um, and we're going to be going live with our guest today, the one and only David Knight. So if you have any questions as well, uh, please feel free to ask them and I'll put them to David as well. Uh, this is your chance to speak to a true professional that has really walked the kind of walked their talk over the years. Uh, not only is he a renowned hypnotist and therapist, uh, he does some stuff with the law of attraction and manifestation. And, uh, and I believe he's a bit of a Jack fan as well. So we've got a lot in common. We've got a couple of funny stories. Uh, but without further ado, uh, get ready to welcome to Grant Talks Funny Bits, the one and only David Knight. And he's there. He's it, which side is it? It's that no, it's that side. I'm there. Oh, right. Every no. week I get it wrong. You should I should put a marker down somewhere. David, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm fabulous. Thank you so much for having me here. It's a pleasure to be here. Great to see you. Well, it's, it's, it's good to see you too. Um, the, I said the last time I saw you, the first time I saw you was actually, like I said, it was about 15 years ago at a Masonic Ladies Charity Night when I was just a hypnotherapist back then. Um, and I think your show was one of those things that influenced me to go into the stage. Wonderful. But it, it was, it was a, a charity fundraiser for a, a local Freemasons Lodge. And I remember it was all very posh. And then you hypnotised, my wife went under very deeply, and you hypnotised her and told her she was the world's greatest lap dancer. And it was just that moment where the room just went silent, and it was like, but, you know, it, it was great fun. So, yeah. Do you know what? I remember it, and I had no idea that that was your wife. It's only now that I've, I've found that out. What a great night that was. It was, great. actually. It was a really it great was. night. So, do you know what? I, I visited that lodge uh, a, a couple of, uh, probably a couple of years ago now, and Freemasonry... It either like hypnosis shows either work really brilliantly for for Masonic lodges or they don't at all. And with the dwindling of membership and the age of the members going up now, you know. But yeah, it's it's, it's good fun. But yeah, great lodge. So yeah, um, how are you? What are you doing at the moment? Obviously, you know, pre COVID, we're all traveling the world, doing wonderful things. Um, you know, what what are you doing now? Well, I, I guess, that, 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 you know, the nice part about being a stage hypnotist is that you've always got other, other options available to you, such as the, the therapy side and the, yeah. the coaching side. And so we're very lucky that we can make a little bit of a, a shift and continue to work. Um, so, yeah, that's that's what I'm doing at the moment. Um, focus more on the hypnotherapies and more on hyp hypnosis coaching using hypnosis to help people through it break through um you know the struggles the self self-limiting beliefs and of course the covid brings its own problems with it yeah and, yeah. and I, as we move forward there'll be even more opportunities for the hypnotherapy type of stuff because people are going to need help they're going to need support to get through this so i guess one door slam shut in your <laughs> And and you open another and try and sneak through that one. <laughs> yes, yes. I must. Say, I, I always said, uh, having gone into stage, I always I never thought I would go back to doing the therapy stuff uh, because it's you know it's like you're on that big stage, you get all the applause, everyone kind of telling you how wonderful you are. Uh, to going back to kind of you know fat middle aged women that want to eat chocolate and lose weight uh, fills me with dread, but you know need must. <laughs> it's not the same. <laughs> Yeah, we got so we got a couple of those there. Malcolm Sparks, uh, who's actually from a lodge in Leeds, uh, he says hi. Uh, oh. Jason Simmons, who's a, a station with us from down south, uh, he says, uh, I hope you're both well. Looking forward to watching this one. Uh, Alana Jennings says hi, guys. Uh, Alana Jennings, what she said now, have you curled your fringe especially? <laughs> that, uh, was there that me or, or for you, that one? I, th yeah, I, th I, think, that was, I think that was aimed at you, that, David. <laughs> 
So um, a couple of things. Um, within our industry, there's always been a big movement for the world's fastest, the world's quickest, the world's et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, am I right in believing you have the, the Guinness World Record for the world's fastest? Well, I, I guess so, yeah. Um, I, I think there are much faster, there's much faster techniques out there now. And, you know, some stage hypnotists are clicking the fingers and, and 20 people just seem to, to fall on the ground. Uh, I, I guess the, the, the issue there was that it, it, it's very difficult for that technique to be to be measured. Mm. Um, so the, the current world record stands at 32 uh, people hypnotized in 60 seconds, which I set um, about, uh, oh, blimey, about 1993, something like that. So it's it's an old record. Uh, we managed to get people there to uh, uh, to measure hypnosis as, uh, as well as we possibly could. And for the volunteers that were hypnotized to uh, perform some hypnotic act. Yes. Um, and so we had 60 volunteers in total and 32 were judged to go under uh, in the 60 second point so yeah i guess so i guess that makes me the fastest hypnotist in the world still <laughs> well congratulations i must admit that, that watching the video it's, it's a great it's a great demonstration like you said it's not just it's not just how it can be done with hypnosis where click and somebody does something it's the induction and the phenomena as well so they're actually getting to, to do something but to watch it, I was going to show the clip. To watch it is very, um, uh, is it Benny Hinn, the American evangelist? <laughs> it's, it's just going along and tapping them on the heads and they're all dropping on the floor everywhere. I thought next thing you'd be getting out a Bible and just, just you it's know, exercising bit. them there and then. So, yeah, it's, it's a great video and a great demonstration of that. Okay. I guess the nice thing about it, look on the on on the the reason it was done, it was done for charity. Yeah. And on the night we made eight thousand uh, pound, which helped somebody get an operation that they needed and paid for it. Brilliant. So that'll do. That that yeah. that. Yeah, it's it it's nice when it's nice when you can do what you enjoy and help people at the same time doing that. So yeah, yeah well done, well done on that. Uh, Brian Glenn says, "Hey, good to see you both." Uh, so yeah, Brian's here as Brian, well. Yes, yeah, Brian. <laughs> oh, you you know Brian. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, how did I know you do uh, show wise before COVID? Uh, I know you're doing a lot of cruise ships. Uh, how did you find the transition from? kind of club circuit, corporate work in the UK, how did you find the transition to going over to cruise ships? Because, I mean, I, I was around at the time-ish when you kind of, I remember you were everywhere, and then all of a sudden you were like cruise ships, <laughs> um, and, and that was it. How did you find that transition? It was scary. It, it, it's a big change, you know. Um, the, the cruise ships sound amazing, don't they? Yeah. Uh, and um, I was very, very fortunate. Uh, very few stage hypnotists about, obviously, and I've always kept a, a pretty good and pretty clean reputation with the, yeah. with the show. And I had an agent who contacted me um, uh, and they said, look, would, would you love to do the, the, the cruise ships? And I said, no, thank you. Um, <laughs> come down. And um, they called me back. They called me back for about, for about, I must have been about four or five times. And this was about seven years, uh, no, not seven years ago. It was, uh, Ooh, about 14 years ago now yeah. it must have been about 14 years and i just finished filming for um uh the the, the the recent one it was called back in the room um when it when it came out recently i did the um the pilot shows for that uh, which was literally 14 years ago it's taken 10 oh. years program to get fully developed and come out <clears throat> And um, so I was doing that and I was down in London and I just finished the, the like six months of work when went into uh, creating the first pilot, which which was crazy. And I, I was sat on um, King's Cross Station and the agent phoned me again <laughs> and said, hey, David, um, what are you doing next week? Well, literally, my diary was empty completely uh, because the filming had finished. And I said, uh, what, what, what's the plan? They said, right, we'll, we'll fly you to Barbados and jump on a ship and you'll do three days. You'll go to these three islands and then we'll fly you home. Will you, will you have a go? And I thought, <laughs> <laughs> uh, how much? How much was the next question I asked? And they, they paid pretty well. 
Yeah. And, um, uh, and so that was it. That, that was, I think, on the Friday night and on the Saturday morning, I was jumping on the plane and, and flying out. So I didn't really know what I'd let myself into. Mm. And it's a bit scary. It, um, everything's it's very different from what you are are used to in the UK yeah. um, uh, or anywhere else in the world, really. It is, a di- it is a different breed. You've got to become a different animal when you work on the cruise ships, as you know. Um, you've got to turn up, you've got to be there, and the show's got to be absolutely squeaky clean. Yeah. And if you mess up, you're done. Yeah. So if there's anybody that's thinking about jumping on the cruise ships, my, my, my words would be, yeah, but make sure that your show is absolutely spot on before you do it. You've got to be ready to blow the audience away. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's a little bit scary. Having said that, it's fabulous, isn't it? It yeah. is. A, yeah. a great place. It's when you get into it. it. It took me a couple to get. I say get used to it. I'm far from used to it. Um, but to, for me, I kind of went from feeling like I was, a, you know, a bit of a big dog, and then I've gone on this cruise ship, and all of a sudden it was like, right, forget everything. Forget everything you know. This is about, you know, the the expectation or the high standards that is expected from from everybody on, on board, from the, you know, from the from the guests to the crew, is so much higher. The production value is is like like you've never never seen before, and that's that's it's a whole new beast. Is that so? Yeah, that was, that was pretty amazing. It truly is. You you have to be able to smash the show when you yeah. when you, uh, you you haven't got time to think. You no. know. You, your show is uh, probably 45 minutes and yeah. you've got 45 minutes to blow the audience away. And um, that's that's pretty quick for a hypno show, isn't it? You're yeah. in and you're, and you're done. And and you start getting a bit nervous when, when, you, when you look to the side and see the, see the cruise director waiting there and you're like, whoa, <laughs> you know, because if you go over, you're dead. You may as well get out a, a shepherd's crook and, and pull you back in. <laughs> Absolutely. Your, your timing's got to be immaculate, as you know. Yeah. You, you, you go... You go two minutes under or two minutes over, and um, if you've got the wrong cruise director, you you could blow the gig yeah. by, by by two minutes. Um, yeah. If you're really good, they'll give you a little bit of leeway. Um, but if it's uh, some sometimes, you know, they've they've got a forty five minute slot and they've got to get people out of the theater. And if you're working with other another act or you've got dancers on afterwards, you know, they've got the dancers have got maybe three or four minutes and then they've got to get people out. So you, yeah. you, you can't you can't mess it up. I think that some, somebody ex- explained it to me um, that if if they're not out at the right time, then they're not going to go into the casino and they haven't got time to spend in the casino to go on to the next show later on in the nightclub. So if you were over by your ego by three minutes, that's costing the cruise ship company money. And if you're costing them money, that you're never going to go back. So yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah, it's been a learning curve for me, and I've only I've only done a few. Um, you're right. quite a, a seasoned a seasoned veteran for the ships now. Yeah, I get I guess so. Um, you know, they say the average sort of life for an entertainer cruise ship entertainer is maybe three or four years um i've been doing the cruise ship so for 14 years so oh. 14 years um i guess that's around 500 cruises coming up to about wow. 500 um 500 cruises nice so that's a couple of thousand a couple of thousand stage shows and seminars on the ships brilliant what's the uh what's the oldest group you've worked with on a cruise ship yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I did a i did a uh, princess one a couple of years ago um, and it was, it was, it, it, yeah it was uh it was it was a, i think it was like a round the world cruise it was a really long cruise so for the people to have the money and the time to be on board and it was weird that like normally the first show for me is quiet the second show's busy this one, the first show was fairly busy. The second show, the whole ship was dead. Everybody was in bed for half past nine. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm going to say the same thing as well. Probably Princess. But, you know, yeah. they're still great crowds. Yeah. Great crowds, but you've got to have a show that that, that, that can change. Yeah. And you've got to look after that audience. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, maybe a, a little bit older, uh, some of them. So, you know, you'll get you'll get people who are seventy years old volunteering for the show, yeah. and they're still fun. They're still yeah. you have to be a little more careful with these people. The sense of humour doesn't change. They, they, exactly. you know, they can be crazy. <laughs> I think sometimes people get to a certain age and they do kind of go. Do you know what? 
I, I want to let go of it now. I can let go of it now. I don't have to worry about, about you know, kind of worry what other people think about me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, I know you're I know you're a bit of a car fan, a car fanatic. Uh, I think the last time I saw you, actually, I was I was coming back from a gig and you were, I think we were both coming back from a gig. And I remember flashing my lights behind you. Um, in, uh, uh, I think it was an X, a Jaguar XJ you had then? It was yeah. a good one. Yeah, I've had a. I, I do like the cars. I, I guess that's one of the uh, one of my wastes of money. It's nice yeah. to earn money, but uh, uh, I like to enjoy it as well. So, yeah, normally got a a, a Jag or a Porsche or something. Um, nice. On nice. The, yeah, and why not? Why why not? We work hard, you know. When you're working, um, whether you work in the clubs, the, the 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 club circuit, whether you work in the cruise ships, it's all hard work. The cruise ships sound great fun. And they are, and they're amazing, as you know. But you, you got to turn up on time. Yeah. When you, the moment you leave home, you're on a you're on a schedule. You know, you yeah. know when your show is. You know what time your show is when you're leaving the house, and you've got to be there. Yeah. Uh, 15 minutes before, so that dates. Then that time's already in your diary, yeah. and you got the taxes, the planes, and everything else in the way. Um, of you getting there um and so for the moment you 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 set off it you, you've got to be on the ball you yeah. really got to be on the ball i don't know how i've survived it so long <laughs> back on it now <laughs> yeah i must admit I, I i relax a bit after the first tech rehearsal up until that point i'm panicking that any anything could happen and it, whatever that could be is going to make me look bad if the flight's delayed if the taxi driver's late if anything could happen up until that tech rehearsal, I'm I'm on edge. After that, I can relax a little bit. Yeah, you're still in yeah. the, the tech guys, though. At, the, at that point, you know that, like you say, the the tech behind the show, um, oh. it's all run by computers now. Whether it's the uh, the, the 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 sound, the lights, and the uh, the graphics, the presentations, yeah. uh, you know, there, a lot of them are digital screens, beautiful theatres. Yeah. I mean, there are theatres like this in the UK. There's a there's a handful of theatres that have the standards of the cruise ships in the uk but they yeah. are beautiful places to work yeah um, uh, yeah i must admit the, that the first kind of sound tech rehearsal it is it's it's something else it's not it's not like the old days when it was just you know, a dj in the corner with an ipod you know it's 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 the full bells and whistles which is brilliant oh an ipod that that's that's modern uh, i remember using cassettes i used to use doing the show with the shows were all on cassette so you'd have wow. i would literally i would have uh, my, my my partner would be with me and either she'd play the music or she couldn't make it i'd have to play the music so you'd say cassette tape up you go <laughs> over you put you press the button you press play and then after the track's finished you've got to reject it take the tape out put the next tape in and then after you've finished the show you've got to go home get a pencil <laughs> yeah. the track, so we're only like 30 seconds <laughs> we're going to wind all the cassettes all, all the things back right to the beginning so that it was ready to go oh, yeah. the next night <laughs> I, I remember i remember mini disc and that was that was like that was that was amazing technology was mini disc that was genius um, but, but yeah and that's just i mean that's obsolete now yeah gone it's crazy isn't it you yeah. can't see the music anymore it's just floating in the cloud somewhere i don't yeah i don't know what i I, I again to be prepared. I have it on a I have it on a USB stick. I've got it on my phone, my iPod. I've got it on a CD as well on MP3, and I have it on the cloud just to be sure. <laughs> <Back ever. laughs> That's right, because if you get there and uh, the music goes, you just you just got to carry on. Well, exactly. The, the exactly. show just goes on. I've had that before. It was mini disc that let me down actually. Um, um, so that was that was a number of years ago. I don't know. Yeah. 20 years ago i guess when the show was on mini disc and it was um, the mini disc i'd had tapes break and stuff like that <laughs> or you, you would put the tape in you dropped it down the back of a table somewhere you couldn't get it you just carry on without the music but i remember yeah I, when i um uh, uh when, when one of those machines let me down there was no there's there no music so you just did the show without it you just carry yeah. on nobody yeah. knows yeah that's 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 how I do this show. Every week something goes wrong, and I just I carry on. I did a show with Richard Barker, and they changed the settings to first going out in it in like 1080p high, high definition. Uh, so I've done the show with Richard Barker, and I'm talking, he's talking. As far as I can see, everything's going fine. But the stream that got broadcast, there was no no sound whatsoever. <laughs> so yeah, so it was at the end of it. Someone's gone. There was no sound. I'm like, oh, 
somebody could have said something earlier. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Love it. Love yeah. it. That's nice. Great event. Am I right in thinking you did a music video some years ago? I did do a music video, yeah. Yeah. Um, that, 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 do you know what? That was really cool, actually. There's a guy called Tommy Sparks, and um, he came to watch one of my shows. So I, was at, I think it was Hull University, um, and he was in the audience just, just watching. And yeah. he had his music manager with him, which was really cool because it was um, Apple Records. Um, and so Apple Apple Records were there, and they said, "Hey, there's, why don't we use him for the from the video?" And so the next day, he called me and said, "You know, fancy doing a pop video?" <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so I said, uh, "Tell me what you want me to do, and send me the send me the music." So I got I got the music. My kids were uh, I don't know about five or six years old. So I played the music to the kids. I said, hey, kids, what do you reckon to this? And they went, oh, yeah, that's really cool. What is it? And I thought, okay, that'll do for me. So I did. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was one of my cool cool moments uh, as a dad because it was a, a year or two later. It was on, I was in the kitchen uh, at home doing the dad stuff, making tea, having a, frying a nice little steak. And um, as, as I was frying the steak, my kids in the lounge were like, ah! So I ran through to see what was happening, and this pop video was on. Was it MTV? It was, it was yeah. There. And they were showing this pop video, and it was like, yeah, Dad was cool for a minute. Oh, <laughs> three minutes and fifty-four seconds. <laughs> um, I, mean, I suppose it's yeah, it's the, it's the joy of, of 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 doing what you do, and it's, it's it's a great point you bring up that how opportunity can come from you doing a show in Hull for a students' union or, or whatever it was, and from that you know, comes another great opportunity. So it's why, you know, you should always do the best that you can wherever that show is. You never know who's in the audience and what that's going to lead to. So, Absolutely. yeah. That's that's so true. That's where the breaks come from. Um, yeah. It's always somebody in the audience somewhere. See, yeah. um, which again, to me, one of the big things that I did it was when I first started, I was lucky enough to get shows on The Big Breakfast. I don't know if you remember The Big Breakfast. You're a bit young for for, for, the, for the big breakfast um and again i was seen on a, a a show and invited onto the onto the big breakfast which was really cool because so i did the first ever live um hypnosis on tv oh never wow. done, uh, live before so it's a bit, a bit risky to do you never know what's going to happen really but uh uh yeah that, that went really well was w was really cool and again it's just from doing being out there doing the job and uh, having fun, people seeing you. You never yeah. know what's going to come. Yeah. Uh, I, I, the theme every week really is that, you know, the, the best thing for stage hypnosis and for it to thrive through this is people out there doing good stage hypnosis. If somebody sees a good show, they enjoy it. It opens up opportunities for other people to do good shows. It's when people see a, a boring show or a math show where they go, oh, no, I don't like that. I will never go see one again. So, yeah. If I mean, I know you, you train people as well um, in both the therapy side of things and for the, the stage hypnosis side of things. If you were to give, uh, if you could give yourself a tip, right, you, the David that's just starting out, if you to give him a tip um, for success on stage, whether it be a performance element or from the business side of it, what would that be? Well, one would be, what you've just said do your best in every in in every situation but if you was asking me that now just to have belief in yourself and believe that you can do it and i think set set your vision higher yeah you know pe people overestimate what they can do in the short term but underestimate what they can do in the long term yeah so you know over our over our lifetime, whether you're a stage hypnotist or whatever you do when you're on stage in front of people, you, you're going to touch the lives of millions of people. So have a have a big dream and make it big. Um, in fact, you know, there's a saying, um, uh, dreams should be always one size bigger. So you grow into them. And so whatever oh. your dream is, go bigger still. Yeah. And, and, and just and just do it. You're good yeah. enough. Just yeah. do it. Brilliant. Um, who was David? And Bowie I've lost before? your sound now, Grant. Can you hear oh, me? Okay, I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Um, you have disappeared. Oh. I think uh, 
It's okay. I, I will now take over the show. Have you hit the to do it? There we go. I'll just check that. I'll just check that. There we go. It, I, I don't know if anybody can um, uh, can yeah, hear me. Can. If you can hear me, give us a, a little message in the, uh, in the room <laughs> there. And if you can hear uh, Grant as well, give me a, yeah. a message and let us know that you can you can. Uh, Hey Grant, um, I'm not sure which one of us you can hear and which and which you can't. Yeah, well, ho hopefully, the, hopefully it should come back from somewhere. It's definitely here. What I'll do is I'm going to refresh this feed, um, and it should it should fix it if it's not there. Let's have a double check. Um, I believe we're both going out. I can I can hear me on my phone now. Um, I'm so, assuming it's my sound that's uh, that, that that's gone be. there, Grant. Is it? Let me just let me. I, well, I can if hear you. you can but hear just, me. Yeah, Brian um, says he can hear us both. That's great. We're talking about hiccups and things going wrong, and then you, and then the you, can you hear now me, have David. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's really really good. Yeah. Um, look, so, I've got my phone in front of me. If you want to message me um, through uh, Facebook Messenger, yeah. Oh, we got it's all okay. Oh, that's Brian Glenn giving us a message. It's all okay, I think. Yeah, uh, good to see. Good to see both of you. There we go. <laughs> so, so if you can't hear, it's I'll a live show. Gonna, it just keeps I'm going. just going to refresh this, and then hopefully um, that should sort out David's sound. Um, let's see what happens. <laughs> Anything. There we go. How about that? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? We've got Jason saying, um, oh, I can hear you both. Uh, says oh, Jason. Brilliant. brilliant. Okay, fantastic. Um, so, so, so they can hear us. I just can't hear you then, Grant. Right. Uh, Grant, if you've got a question that you want to ask. I could type the question in you. here. Yeah, but there will be a bit of a delay. I'm just going to show uh, David's uh, uh, a clip from uh, one of David's shows on a cruise ship. Uh, and after this show, David will talk about it. Um, and basically, it's a callback. The show's finished. All the volunteers have gone back to the state, uh, gone back to their seats. And this is just as the uh, audience is leaving the theatre on the ship. Um, and then when we do that, uh, David, uh, what I'll do is I'm going to kick you out if you can click to come back in the link. I'm going to message David whilst that's going on, actually. One second, guys. There we go. This is what happens when it's live. <laughs> um, I'll kick you out then. And there we go. How cool, how cool is this technology, pack. really? There's always a way around it. Link. Uh, that's my advice. There we <laughs> go. Always B have a backup. backup. <laughs> there we go. Right. I'll kick you out, then click back in again. Okay, let's do that. Right. There we go. <laughs> Remove. So, guys, I'm going to show you the clip now from hopefully whilst David then clicks back into the link. Um, I could make a joke about old people and technology, but I won't. It's only because he's not in the room. Uh, so I'm going to click that link. This is from uh, this is from just after the show. Um, and this is a great clip, is this? And whilst this is playing, hopefully David will click back in. So is that thing you can do? There's nothing you can do to do stop them. So where what state you from? Come on, everybody! <laughs> the Martians are coming! Everybody go! Come on! Everybody out! The Martians are coming! Brilliant clip, brilliant clip. Right, let's see if we have drum roll, ladies and gentlemen. Um, he is here again. Let's see. Is it which side is it? It's going to be that side. I'll press the button. There Steve, you can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Can you hear me? I can <laughs> hear you loud and clear as well. There we go. Brilliant. Uh, so, yeah, in the uh, 
that's you talk about a technical hitch and that's that's how powerful your voodoo is there david you <laughs> jinx us <laughs> uh, yeah uh, so uh, whilst the clip was playing alana jennings said scottish people are naturally so much more funnier um, and do you know what? I think it's a good point to that. I think someone with a regional accent, especially a Scottish one, when they're doing a shouty skit, it just it just is funnier. It does it? It is funny. I love the I love the Martian sketch. Um, yeah. So that the, the, the Martian sketch, I, I guess it's an old it's an old sketch um, uh, with the Martians uh, coming. It used to be the Russians were coming, didn't they? The Russians. Yeah. I mean, um, uh, and so the Martians basically, I just do it at the end of the show. So it's a a post hypnotic suggestion. Post hypnotic suggestion means that during the show we put the suggestion in, and at the end of the show we don't take the suggestion out. Mm -hmm. uh, we give it a time limit. is is probably one of the easiest ways uh, of removing it. So I think the Martians are coming was running for about five or six minutes after the show, and you can see from the clip there he was sat right at the back of the theatre. Um, the theatre that was actually on a cruise ship. Mm -hmm. um, Beautiful theatre, I think it was Navigator of the Seas, holds about 1,400 people in that. Uh, in in that theatre, and he was um, uh, right at the back. And literally, I I told him that um, uh, he for ten seconds he believed the Martians are coming, and then he'd realise that they're not, and it's a mistake. He's made a mistake, and uh, would apologise to people and and ask them to sit back down again. Uh, and then twenty seconds later, he'd realise the Martians really were coming, uh, yeah. and that, so that would just repeat. Uh, yeah. On, or, uh, about four or five minutes after the show what's what's nice in that particular skit as well is you see his face when he sits down and he realizes what he's done and you can see the not embarrassment but there's just the you know the that you could you can tell he's going through something um, and then it fires off again and then off he goes again Isn't it and fine? i think that they can be much more profound demonstrations of hypnosis than when people see it up on the stage because it, it's real then it's 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 right next to them they're walking past it they can almost touch it it becomes much more real much more profound for them so yeah let the post hypnotic is a brilliant and that one particular is a is a brilliant one yeah i i, I agree exactly with what what you've said um a big theater 1400 people and the 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 volunteers on stage do got go do get lost and mm. the people who were in the audience who were a little bit skeptical and so when i do that afterwards it does change a little bit of the skepticism around because <laughs> you're not in control you've got no control over the people at that point yeah you know quite what's quite what's coming but can be great yeah. when done correctly as well you know yes and, and that's it with post hypnotics there is always the safety element to it as well um so i'm, I'm i guess you do the enrichment programs as well do you do uh, the the talks on the power of the mind What's your what's your angle on that? Yeah, I I, I do. Um, I've got um, uh, a, a three seminars that I do on the cruise ships or um, in 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 theatres at other times as well, and um, uh, training seminars, corporate corporate stuff. So there's um, uh, one called Go Hypnotic is all about um, the subconscious mind, and then we go into those more fun stuff as well. Um, which is called naked hypnosis. Naked hypnosis is simply me naked. Um, <laughs> You're not selling this one to me, David. <laughs> I'm going to leave the image with you. <laughs> Uh, for a nice fee, I'll take it away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Naked hypnosis is obviously uh, hypnosis and its its secrets revealed, um, which is is um, basically about obviously the subconscious and unconscious mind and how we can access to make positive changes to the future. So yeah, they're great. They're 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 very very popular. Uh, a great way of getting into the cruise ship uh, market as well. Brilliant. I'll put a link up as well to your website, uh, the davidknighthypnotist.com. Um, and there's, there's lots of resources on there. And uh, you've got a newsletter and some MP3s. And this, it's, uh, it, it's a, a very um, a resourceful website. There's lots of stuff on there. People that have an interest in developing their career as a hypnotist, a state hypnotist, a hypnotherapist, or other areas, you know, your website's pretty much got that covered. So that's, that, that's really good. Thanks, what's, Glenn. Appreciate what, that. What's what's next for you? What's your next project? Or are you waiting for the for the ships to start sailing again? 
Okay, um, I'm not waiting for the ships. Um, there's we, we've got to we've got to uh, carry on. So I'm working on the hypnosis coaching at, at the moment, help, helping people move forward. There's a lot of people in the world that are stuck. A lot of people yeah. that don't know what their future is. Even more people now with the COVID nineteen and all the changes that it's making to the world. So I'm going to be helping people with uh, stress, anxiety, and um, breaking free and and moving forward. You know, I, helping people to discover uh, their purpose, um, yeah. what the dreams are, what their what their vision is, and I, I really enjoy that. That that that's pretty fabulous. And of course, oh, yeah. with the power of hypnosis, um, we we have the ability to reach back into the past and and remove those self limiting beliefs that that the people have. Yeah. So working on that, um, and that will happen, I guess, probably for the for the for the year ahead, really, Grant. Um, I do want to get back to cruising. I love you. We, well, we all know what it's like. You're on stage, yeah. you're on stage, and it's it, it, it's fabulous. If you're a stage hypnotist, you're like a stick of Blackpool rock. You break you in half, and it says stage hypnotist in, inside yeah. and around. And so yeah. the the fun, the thrill, and the excitement of, of of being on the stage, and 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 flying by the seat of your pants in in, in many cases because yeah. you know when when I've got many friends, obviously, in uh, who do the cruise ships. The nice thing about cruising, you're on with your friends, so you've got there's a magicians, there's comedians, there's there's lots of people on the on the ship performing with you, and most of the shows are forty five minutes, and so when you're on a cruise ship, you are literally they throw you out onto the stage, and it's like a, a forty five minute drop out of an aeroplane. You are just going down uh, and, until you hit the ground. Now, the great news for everybody else is they're all planned and prepared. If you sing, you you go out there and sing. Um, whatever skill it is, you can just go and do it. When you're a stage hypno, uh, there's no guarantee that, that, that you haven't got a show. So it's like the other shows, but the audience have packed our parachute. And so we just <laughs> hope that they've packed one for us. Yes. But yeah. that's the thrill. That's, that's the, the animal. That's the nature of the beast, isn't it? And to go yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, one thing I always ask, because um, a lot of hypnotists, they seem to be kind of, uh, you know, avid readers. Um, if you were to recommend two books, uh, what would those be? Oh, Dr. Juice is just fabulous. <laughs> yeah. Really. Uh, do you know what? I, that's a really, really difficult uh, question to answer. And I can't, I can't answer it right now. Um, uh, you know, everybody should have the Ormond McGill one, shouldn't they? The, yeah. Uh, I can't even remember what, it, what it's called. Professional Art of Stage Hypnotism, is it? Yes. Yeah, the New, yeah, the new Encyclopedia of Stage Hypnotism. It's yeah. weird. Uh, uh, I mean, every, every week we have somebody on, uh, and everyone's at the top of their game that's been on the show. And uh, it's weird how everyone always says the same thing. They always say, You've got to have Alman McGill's book. And then they always say, But then you've got to read it again later on once you've, once you've become a proper hypnotist. And it's, it's, it starts off being the Bible, and then you read it now, and you go, That don't work, that don't work, that don't work. <laughs> <laughs> but you've still got to have it. It's it's kind of like you've got an old bat. That's the foundation. Yeah. Then you then you figure out what doesn't work and what works for you, and then you go back to it and go, what? I, I but, don't yeah. think read it. I don't think I'd suggest they read it. Just just put it on the shelf. Just have it. It's a yeah. You can use it if they don't go under. You can just hit people with it, and that knocks them out. And it looks like hypnosis. <laughs> <laughs> but that will work every time. You know, that will. with. I guess hypnosis is is a little bit like tennis. You, you're never going to get good by reading a book. Um, yes. Don't 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 read them. Just go and do it. Do it. Absolutely. So John Richardson says hi. Uh, John oh, Richardson, wait, John. A local guy to me, and uh, I believe John's John's trained with you as well. He, uh, he absolutely has, and what a lovely what, what a lovely guy he is. Hello, John. Lovely. To yeah, is it? He's a great guy, is John. He is. He's a smashing guy. I follow him on Facebook all all, all the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Super super chap as well. Yeah, uh, we're supposed to be, we're supposed to be going clay pigeon shooting me and John at some point, and he's going to teach me a few pointers. Uh, <laughs> weirdly, we all the only time we bump into each other is in the uh, the local gun shop. Yeah, have you still got that? Oh. Uh, Brian Glenn says, "Have you still got that hypno number plate, David?" Oh yeah, I I do actually. The number plate on the car is to sleep. Yes, 
<laughs> yeah, it's it's still there, bro. Thanks for asking. You know, oh, yeah. the number plates got me quite quite a lot of work over the uh, over the years. Um, yeah, people do recognise the car. The trouble is, you've got to you can't cut people up, and um, uh, when you've got to sleep on your plate, uh, and obviously people know you're locally, so they're continually letting people out and being. Yes. Blessed. People, <laughs> but it does it does get you noticed. And like we just yeah. what you said, Grant. Uh, you, you remember driving down the uh, was it exactly the one or the A one or something? I think it was somewhere like that. Yeah, I just remember seeing a Jag, and it, it was to sleep. And I'm like, oh, so I flashed my lights, and then you pulled over, and I thought, oh, he thinks I'm being a he thinks I'm being a knobhead now. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember, I remember getting back and sending a message, but no, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, David, it's been an absolute pleasure catching up with you um and uh, you never know we might actually meet up for a coffee in real uh once the world settles down a little bit yeah. um, and I'll, I'll definitely get me out for the stuff you're doing online as well with the, the the development and the coaching side of things and i encourage everybody to follow david on his socials as well uh, check out his website and and definitely um he is literally one of the greats in this industry uh, it's definitely influenced me is influenced lots of people and it is a great guy. So, yeah, guys, don't forget to tune in next week as well. If you don't subscribe on YouTube yet, go over to YouTube, hit the subscribe and the bell, and then each week uh, you get notified of, of new shows. Um, and, yeah, um, and that, that's it. Any final words, David? Thank you so much for, for having me on here. Look forward to um, meeting up with you guys and with, with, with Brian and John and anybody else um, in the near future. We will get through this. It yes. will change. We will get back to a normal, hopefully not the normal that we had before. Hopefully it's it's bigger, better and yep. stronger. And uh, yep. we'll be back and performing shows. See you Brilliant. soon. Brilliant. Cheers, David. Thank you very much. Thank you.